Hi, welcome to the business of building applications. In this course, we're exploring the business process of design and developing an application in a mobile field. So as you can see, we're in several different chapters of a course. So we're in section two right now, which is about designing an application. However, there are other sections that we're going to explore in other videos. So if you haven't subscribed, please do that now, and then you can join us for all of this material if this interests you. My name is Shad Sluter, and I'm a professor of software development and computer science at Grand Canyon University. And so if you're in my course, welcome. And if you're not, and you're just looking along, then please join us and receive a degree that will actually get you a really good career. So in this section, we're talking about application design. And really, there are four parts to app design. We're going to, first of all, or we did already, talk about which features that are in essential in making a successful app. The user interface is about what the app looks like. In this video, we're going to talk about the experience that a user has as he or she is going through the flow and the execution of your application. We want to make sure that that is good because that's essential for retaining uh, users and making apps addictive. And then finally, we're going to talk about the principles of MVP, which is the minimal viable product that you would present to investors and to potential users. It's kind of the version 1.0 or the beta version of your app that makes you either confirm or deny that your app will actually work. So we're in the section called user experience or sometimes called UX. So how is this different from the user interface? Well, really the user experience is the, is the overlap of several different things. First of all, the design, which is what most people would think of as the user interface, the, the technology that is there. So what are the uh, actual interfaces, whether it's a tablet, phone, web page, virtual reality, or the third one is the strategy. So what are you trying to accomplish? And does the user actually meet those goals? And so that is perhaps what we would consider the experience of the user. So for us, we would consider it, that's a five star or a one star experience. It has far more to do than the colors and fonts or the layout that you choose. It's the whole process of your application. So let's revisit a cycle that we talked about in the previous video. So as your user is going through these four sections, they are going to experience your application or the UX. So first of all, the application starts somewhere. So how do users find you? And then how do they get on board? How do they begin the process of becoming a registered user and active in your, in your app? Then the retention part is the addictive or the interesting or the engaging part of your application that keeps them coming back. Do you have something worth doing, in other words, in the retention stage? And then finally, referral. Do they invite friends? Do they have actions with other users? Is there a way that hooks new people to come in and repeat the cycle and of course then your audience grows? Then finally, somewhere in this process you have to figure out how to monetize your app without annoying everybody. So too many ads of course will ruin the user experience. Too high of a price and people might not even get in the front door. And so there's a balance of where the successful companies have learned to use experience and monetization at the same time and they of course have a great program. Now here is a previous uh, user layout that we showed in the last video on the user interface. So user interface are the actual views. Each screen could be considered an interface. However, the process of linking these together and the logic flow of the program is just as important as how clearly they're drawing. Now, the time bank here app is to uh, have somebody organize their time so that they can decide how much they're gonna spend on exercise or study or with their family or commuting or whatever. And so it's a great way for people to bank their time. I guess that's the, the, the theory of this app is that you can budget your time and use it like you would money. And so that's called the Time Bank app. So I don't know if it's a good app or not, but the, the process here is obviously done well. You can see how the user experience will begin and end and all the steps that are in between there. Now, what would make this even better is that if you put it into a process or a drawing tool like Figma or something like that, and you could test it out, you could click the app, you could watch the screens transition and then make some decisions and refinements based on a prototype. 
So you could think of the user flow is the process of how the user goes from the beginning stages to the end. So let's take a look at a, an example here of what might be a, a shopping experience. So the user opens the app, they do a search for our products, they compare several products. So your user experience might be to show a table, you know, side by side comparison or a save to cart or a wish list or some way to compare. Help the user figure out what they need to do. Then of course, add to cart is what we want. Shopping makes makes the order and then make a frictionless way to pay it. You've probably seen that before. And then finally you receive confirmation and hopefully the Amazon guy shows up at your door and rings the doorbell and you're happy. And so the, the confirmation process outside of the app is just as good as the experience inside the app. So you can imagine that Amazon and people like them have spent literally billions of dollars making this user flow so easy and so obvious that now I see on my phone one click buy. So I don't even have to do the shopping uh, checkout process. Make it easy, make it fun, and then I don't even notice that I just spent some money. So let's revisit this user flow again, the experience of what's happening. So you can see that we have the four stages of our app experience, acquisition, activation, retention, and referral. And so there's a different label we could put on the person at each stage. So what's happening there? So our goal then is we would think about what's, in, what's happening and who the user is, is our goal is to make it easy for this to happen. We want the user to install the app. The next thing is we want it easy and obvious to register an account, which is why so many people just use the Google login or the Facebook login. No one likes to type in passwords and confirm their password. Retention is a, a really engaging or entertaining or something that is very useful, something that serves the need. And so we don't want to confuse or annoy our users in this stage. It's the core of our application. And then our goal here is for people to invite a friend. And so don't just say invite a friend, maybe invite them to play the game with you or invite them to share in a experience or to share a photo or somehow uh, cooperate. And so you want to make it natural in each of these stages. And so that's the idea and the thinking of user experience is you want to reach the goal in each of these stages without sounding contrived or overwhelming or annoying in any way. You want to make it the natural thing that the user wants to do. And then of course, if you're successful with all of these, what's going to happen is the cycle will continue and you'll have a virtuous cycle of new customers coming in by word of mouth. Now, the conversion rate is something that you would want to keep track of. So once you have an app up and running, you're going to think about what is happening at each of these stages. And of course, you're going to lose a few people along the way. And what you want to do then is find out where the choke points are. Where are people dropping out of this experience? And that's where you need to focus and refine what you're working on. So are people dropping out when they get to the checkout? What's going on? Are you having them create all kinds of uh, confirmations and credit card entries, or is that process smoothed out and automated? And so you're, only you are gonna be able to figure out where those problem points are if you've got data on how your users are acting. Now expand your idea more than just about your app, because the user journey begins before the app happens. So they get an invite, or they have some kind of a notice, or they found you in the app store. And so you want to make sure that that's a good experience. The in-app experience is how smoothly it runs during navigation, ordering, or posting. And then finally, when you are done, does your app provide just entertainment while they're in the app? Or are they going to receive a pizza when they're done? Or what's the goal of your service? And so probably thinking about the beginning and the ending and not just what they're doing inside the app is going to help you as well. So a good exercise to make this successful is to create what's called a user empathy map. So you would identify your user and try to predict and live in their shoes. What does your user say? What does your user do? What is he or she thinking? And how do they feel about the experience at each stage? So let's take an example here of somebody that's ordering uh, a, a new item from a restaurant. What do they say? Well, obviously they said, I want to order food. Or maybe they said, I'm hungry. Or I don't want to cook tonight. 
And then what do they do? They open up the app, they browse the menu, and they do comparisons. So you can watch what they're doing. You can see how well that's working. But you can also say, I can try to imagine what the user is thinking. What are some of the important items? Well, they might say, when's it going to arrive? Is this expensive? Will this food taste good? Is it going to be cold, stale, soggy? Uh, are the people going to be rude? And so you can imagine that there's all kinds of questions that would be in that person's mind. And how are they feeling? Who are you dealing with? Well, you're probably dealing with hangry customers. People that want to order food and get it now are going to be impatient. Or they might be excited. They're going to say, oh, good, Chinese food tonight. I haven't had that for a while, and it tastes so good. And so this experience is far more than just coding and user interface. This is about how users feel about your program. And so the only way you can really know this is to talk to your users, watch them, observe them, measure them, and get lots of feedback. And so the user empathy grid will make your user experience far more successful than if you just assume a lot of these things. So qualitative user experiences are going to be things like this. Watch what they do. So literally you could put them in a lab situation or give them the phone and, and just observe quietly. Did they complete the action without any questions? Did they get frustrated? Did they have to ask for help? Did the user do the correct answer? Did they, did they or thought they were doing something, but a menu led them down a false path? Did the user misunderstand something? Was the menu not clear or was it hidden? Did they even not know that it was a menu? Or was the icon just a mystery to them? Maybe they didn't know it was an icon. And so all of these things that seem, you, that seem obvious to you as the developer are going to be measured. Did they have to try multiple times before they finally got it right? If, they, if the answer to any of these questions comes out wrong, then you either have to fix the app or just assume that a great deal of your customers will never come back. And so user experience requires you to watch and observe. And so here's a piece of advice that seems a little counterintuitive at first, but it says, don't listen to what users say, observe what they do instead. And so the idea is to observe carefully and watch to see if there are problems. So if you were to talk about a range of positive to negative user experience, you could put it on this pyramid here. So at the very bottom of the pyramid, we would say the application is useful in the fact that it does what it says. It works. Okay, so that's the minimum user experience we would want. It functions. Then the second one up is probably just as important, obviously. It says you need to be reliable. So reliable means not just that it won't crash, but also it's reliable in the fact that it's consistent. So one place where you would put a, a command is going to follow through for the rest of the application, or you do a process that is repeated in similar ways. Also in convenience, is this a natural and obvious and efficient way to do things? So I know in certain applications that I use, if I want to do minor things that require 15 clicks with a mouse, I get angry, I get annoyed. It's like, who designed this? Who used this? Obviously, they never tested it out. Is your experience pleasant? Okay, so that's getting pretty high now. Where people say, I actually like to use my app. It's attractive, it looks nice. I get a good feeling when I open it. And then at the very top, I guess we would call it meaningful, means that overall, it's a very positive impression. I enjoy using the app and I will be back. And so your UX is trying, of course, to meet the top end of this. So in order to achieve the goals of this meaningful and pleasant experience, let's talk about six principles that will help you whenever you're talking about making a positive user experience. Make it minimal. Find your way to do it without a lot of uh, extra trim. So remember the experience of the contrast between Yahoo and Google? Google is minimal. How about intuitive groupings? And so we think about the way you, menu, you, you organize your menus and your dialog boxes and the clusters of things that belong together logically fit together. It flows naturally. So you don't have to tell your users to figure out what to click next. There's an obvious button or there's a process of sliding or, or clicking that's, that's going to be exactly what they expect. Make sure that the icons are obvious. Invent only new icons when there doesn't exist one already. So just use the standard icons that most applications use. 
make uh, efficient motions. So in a, in a mobile application, think of your right thumb as the place that's going to do most of the work. Or if you're working on an application that covers an entire screen, uh, make sure that you don't have too many clicks or you don't have to move around too much. And all finally, above all probably is consistency throughout. If you pick a plan, stick with that plan so you don't have to surprise users or confuse users from one part of your application to another. Now the next step in building this project is called the MVP or the Minimal Viable Product. So check out the video here that will give some principles on designing an MVP. Also if you want to see the entire playlist for this course, uh, click here and you will see a class list of mini videos. So thanks for watching and please subscribe.